Professor, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Tell us, what is the standard view of growth on Wall Street? The standard view on growth on Wall Street is one, growth is always good. That's not true. Bigger is always better. That is not true. And that companies must grow or die. That's not true. And lastly, public companies should grow continuously and smoothly, as evidenced by quarterly earnings. And that's the exception, not the rule. Tell us a little bit more about how that is a, a failed model. Well, what it leads to, it, it, it leads to a short-term mentality and it leads to the creation of what I call non-authentic earnings. It's almost impossible for companies to grow continuously smoothly on a public companies on a quarterly basis. So if you can't do it by creating the old-fashioned earnings, earnings the old-fashioned way, selling more goods and services to more customers on an arm's length transaction, then you've got to create earnings. And that's the whole earnings management game. It's what I call non-authentic earnings. It is fake earnings. And you get into the problem that companies create fake earnings earnings which don't represent the underlying substance, vitality, or strength of the business, the business model, what customers think about your products and how you're doing by competitors. So it, it, it has a bad effect in that it creates fake earnings, which may create an earnings bubble, which may create illusory stock market valuations. The second thing it does is we know from research that companies, in order to meet their quarterly earnings, will defer investments and defer growth investments and that is bad because what we need in this country is real growth and real innovation and we know that real growth and innovation is a complex thing and you can't manage it to the penny every quarter. Fair. Now, Professor, you've just written a book called Smart Growth, Building an Enduring Business by Managing the Risks of Growth. One of the first things you say is the financial crisis that brought the economy to its knees is an illustration of, of what's wrong with this system. What are some examples of the past few years that illustrate your thesis? Well, you can, you can look in the, financial, in the financial industry and look at the entire securitization and the entire excesses that went on from, from selling paper, all mm. right, without taking into account the consequences of the risk underlying that paper. And so, you want to look at Merrill Lynch, Lehman Brothers, Washington Mutual, and the entire financial area. But you can also look outside the financial area and look at public companies, big companies that have, because of growth, they created risk which fundamentally hurt their business model. Toyota mm. is a great example. Toyota basically in 2002 changed its strategy from being the best to being the biggest. All right? Very, very different mindset. All right, you manage to be the best very differently than managing to be the, uh, the biggest. And what Toyota did was made lots of small changes in order to grow, which fundamentally hurt their quality, hurt their brand, hurt their customer value proposition. My model basically says growth has risks which have to be managed. You can, it is, growth is just not like a spigot that you turn on. Right. And, and so, there's other examples that I give in the book, including the problems that Starbucks got into, the problems JetBlue got into, et cetera. 